uh, the humble servant, the humble servant from Canada, he, him, wondering what, if anything, your objections are for Christianity. Oh, and a little bit of crew cam. <laughs> <laughs> humble servant. Um, yeah, sir. What are what what are our objections for Christianity? Yeah, your best one. AP, what do you got? My objections to Christianity, uh, my best ones. I actually gave someone a list like that uh, a while ago, but one of them uh, would be good. I don't know, you, com you completely caught me off guard here. Oh, I got one here. While you're while you're putting together your best okay, okay, one, okay, okay, I'll okay. give you a one. Um, it's um, it's um, I'll give you two. It's bonus day here on uh, on, on Talk Heathen. I am opposed to magical thinking. Christianity is appears to be a form of magical thinking. When magical thinking is employed as an epistemology, anything is possible. And I don't like that. Also, Christianity doesn't know how to keep it in its pants. Uh, people who practice Christianity frequently want to make their religious beliefs the law of the land. I am not a Christian. There are a lot of non-Christians in this land of ours, this uh, United States of America, and um, I don't want to follow Christian rules uh, because I don't think that they are warranted. Uh, and also, uh, they don't seem to be able to do that particularly well. So that's my objection to Christianity. Now, you might say that's my objection to how Christianity practices its, uh, its interaction with the secular world. And so go ahead and just call it that I, no. I can give you my yeah. three reasons what you gotta um, be? the number one is that there is simply no convincing uh a reason why i would believe in it uh number two is the disputed historicity and the fact that i'm supposed to believe um certain witness reports and texts that i cannot verify when i cannot even trust people around me and uh i think the third reason would be that i simply um do not find any reason to believe in the whole world of spiritual things and in supernatural beings yeah that's it all right uh, i don't want to be a broken record because i think i've demonstrated uh, the jesus christ to be god in many previous uh shows i, I have a I'm going to try to go from a different angle. Do you guys know why we keep a seven day week? Oh no. Oh no. You're the seven day week guy. All right. I'll tell you what. Um, why do we keep a seven day week? I'm sorry to laugh at you. Not really. No, no, but don't worry. Go ahead. Why do we keep a seven day week? Lay it up. Lay it on me. Lay all your love on me. What do you got? <laughs> No, I, 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 I'm trying to go from a different angle. Can you tell me why we keep a seven-day week? Um, no. You tell me. You don't want? Okay. I think it. I think it has very much to do with. I think the seven-day week comes from ancient uh, cultures that Babylon implemented and stuff. the yeah, Bab yeah Babylonian uh, practices found in uh, Sumerian uh, cultures and preceding that as okay. well, based on certain, based, based on their ideas of uh, heavenly objects and so on. Yeah. But I think the humble servants, I think uh -huh. you're going to argue that the reason why is a seven day week is because somewhere back in the Bible, God well, well, said that. that there would be a seven day week and that, um, as a result, it would be let, reflected let out there in the world argument. that God is real. Am I right? Uh, the humble servant or am yeah. I wrong? How about I make my own arguments? First of all, Babylon kept a lunar cycle, 29.5 days, and that's why they add, and they would add an uh, extra day on the last week. Uh, it would finish with eight or nine days, according to the primary Babylonian sources called the Enuma cool. Elish tablets and, and the fifth tablet. So you got to throw Babylon out the window, and Samaria, same thing, lunar cycle, so you got to have to throw it out the window. So, yes. Uh, I believe um, Jesus Christ is demonstrated as Lord over all nations, as cool. two uh, infallible arguments. Number one, that uh, is an uh, infallible uh, argument. Wait, 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 wait. That's uh, an infallible argument. No, I'm about to present my infall infallible Ooh, argument. It's, in, it's infallible. Proposition okay. Number. Lay it on me. Yeah, proposition one. Proposition one. And if you can uh, refute them, I'll become an atheist. Proposition one: uh, the Hebrews claim that their God 
uh, is the author of the Seven Day Cycle, and uh, proposition two, uh, proposition two the, uh, the Hebrews claim that um, the their God would submit the world to a seven day cycle as a sign of their uh, as a sign of His authority over all nations. So we can see two thousand years ago, Jesus Christ said He was Lord of the Sabbath. Therefore, wherever it is a seven day cycle. Therefore, uh, we can say that is the sphere of his influence. So we can say 2,000 years ago, only Israel kept the seven-day cycle, and we saw the domino effect. The last nation to be submitted was the USSR in the 1920s and 1930s. So by that, yeah. he has established his kingdom. What is your argument against that? Okay. Um, I, I, I'll say, Prophet, let me, let, me, let me say something here. In order to establish that this is so, you would have to prove the existence of God. Um, and I don't think you've done that. You've made a, an irrefutable argument because here's my counter argument and I don't really have to do it, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, what you have is, uh, the ancient Israelites, whoever came up with the seven day cycle came up with the seven day cycle, whether it was Genghis or God or whoever the, whoever the heck you want, Thor came up with a seven day cycle. Those people had a seven day cycle. Those people became part of the Roman empire, a group of, uh, a religious sect became and rose to power and eventually became the official uh the official sect the official religious practice of a large world spreading empire that became the most economic and militarily powerful empire in the world and as they spread their influence they spread with it a seven day cycle that they forced upon the people that they conquered and economically, all countries are interdependent from one another. And rather than picking, let's say, the um, Papua, New Papua New Guinea cycle, however many days they use, and if it's seven, cool. Or let's say the Ojibwa tribe cycle that they do. Or let's say it's whoever lives in Tierra del Fuego natively. They went with the group that had the, the most economic and military uh, power. And it just kind of everyone just uh, followed that hegemony. And here we are today. And if in 5,000 years, there is another empire that celebrates an eight day cycle, and they have military and economic hegemony over the world, we're going to have an eight day cycle, whether you like it or not, but you'll be uh, dead and gone. And so will I. So, Prophet, what do you got to say about that? Well, I want to say, I want to say, um, I think uh, Dr. Joshua Bowen, who is a very uh, knowledgeable uh, expert on ancient Near uh, East history, will have a lot of stuff to say about this. I think he would be a he would be an amazing voice to come here and speak on that specifically. But uh, I mean, just a quick search on the first science articles dealing with the issue tell me that the seven day cycle originates from the calendar of the Babylonians uh, because they would count uh, seven days based on the phases of uh, the moon, each phase taking seven days, which is why they established uh, a celebration on every seventh day. And which is why the which is why the seven day cycle came into existence, and that is the oldest record of the, of the seven day cycle as far as uh, we have it. And and I'm just saying this without having looked any further, any deeper into this, with the most well established uh, academic opinion regarding the history of the seven seven day cycle that exists that we have currently at our disposal. That is uh, that is all I see. What I don't see is any evidence of uh the seven day cycle originating with uh you know biblical practices with uh abrahamic practices i don't see uh how god comes into this in any way i it always made sense to me as far as i experienced it and as far as i heard it that the seven day cycle was attributed to the moon and to the uh, heavenly objects or the you know heavenly realms or heavens or whatever you may want to call it but yeah surprise yeah. me yeah i'm uh, we've we've gotten this call before um not persuaded but you know what i tell you what the humble servant i'll go do some research and um um i will I will go examine my beliefs, and if I find that uh, this has any merit, I will, I will, I will talk about it later in the future. But thanks for calling in.